Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the, I was going to say Mental Toughness and Body Show, but that is my one of my podcasts. Uh, between Flex and Reflex Sunday, sit down. This is the weekly segment where I sit down and answer uh, some of the questions that have been sent through, asked by clients and everything this week. Um, so before you wonder what's going on, yeah, I have a I close my eye here. It's quite swollen. I have a sty in my eye, which if you don't know what that is, it's like a, I don't know, a little infection under the eyelid, which also then shows on the upper eyelid. And um, it's quite swollen. I'm on some antibiotic cream and some stuff to, uh, to clear it up. I get them every couple of years. And this one is particularly nasty. So hopefully it doesn't, I was going to wear an eye patch. Hopefully it doesn't distract you. So let's um, get into it. I'm going to answer five questions uh, today. First question, what habits or routines have you found most effective in fostering a growth mindset and why do you think they they work? Okay, so the I guess it comes back to uh, why you want to achieve a growth a growth mindset. So if I look at uh, my my life, when I was 16 years of age, I was in a news agent and I was uh, going through, this news agent also had some books uh, there. And for whatever reason, I was always drawn to books in the area that, you know, you go into a bookshop and they have like different headings and, and so forth of, uh, to, like sections of books and, and stuff. And there was this particular section that was on motivation. And I think this particular book was like on a, a sort of a carousel thing. I remember picking it up and it was called Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. Still have the book on my, my shelf just there. And I was really drawn in by it. I read the, you know, the obviously the, the title, I read the back and uh, I started to look at some of the chapters and I thought, Gee, this is something that I'm I'm really interested in. I wanted to uh, learn to become better and have that better mindset, and um, so I got that book. And uh, kind of from from that moment on, I'm one of my regrets is that I didn't continue. I never finished the book at that particular time of my life, and I, I don't exactly know why, but I was drawn into it for a bit. But I I wasn't a great reader, and I I never finished the book and I regret that because there was something in me that bought it and I I wish I had have kept reading and reading and reading. And then as the internet came out, because yes, it was way before the internet, I uh, I believe I would have had a better, I'd be further along than where I am now. Because I kind of got, it wasn't that I wasn't improving. It was just, I, I then I went to, I went to uni, I, um, I, I was obviously working on mastering my craft there. And then I went to uh, work for a big chartered accounting firm. I then became a chartered accountant. So I was always studying and learning, but I think this was different. It was working on my mindset where all the study I was doing was building skills. And I was, I was uh, practicing work ethic and learning techniques to remember things and study and all that kind of stuff. But I wasn't working on my mindset in the way that I do today. And I, I do regret, I do regret that. Uh, so what I guess fostered that growth mindset was I just wanted to be better. And I think what I saw myself as is being bullied as a young kid. And uh, I was always competing against that bullied version of myself that like, I'm going to show you bullied version and bullies that I'm going to be better. And I'm going to be in some ways better than you. And I'm going to be better than that bullied version of myself because I'm never going to allow myself to feel that way, think that way ever again. And it was about, I was just recording uh, a podcast this morning about uh, what I how I used to think. It was a very toxic uh, mindset that I used to have. I didn't speak about it. It was just in the voice inside my head that would go around and round and beat myself up. And um, I was determined to get rid of that. And then, you know, about 13 years ago, I decided to just increase 
uh, the the quality of my life across all areas, and I was just determined to to just grow more and more. And then as I as I've grown, and certainly the last seven years, of I've had uh, my current coach, uh, I have watched what he's done. I've had conversations and people on my podcast, very, very successful. And I will say that I'm kind of obsessed with success and understanding what drives people and their mindset and success leaves clues. So like today's podcast that I posted was success has no holidays. So when it gets to the weekend, I do this on a Sunday to create the discipline for myself to do something else. I do two podcasts a day, as well as this once a week, as well as all the other things that that I do, uh, because I, I don't want to stop. I want to foster that that mindset to continually grow and continually uh, put out uh, my my best self. And uh, I think a key part of my studying that is knowing that people that are highly successful, they don't take breaks, like weekend breaks. It's like success doesn't take a holiday. It is a seven-day-a-week proposition. It doesn't mean that you don't take time out to uh, to rest and recover in some ways, but it's not taking the whole weekend off. If you want to grow, if you want to get more in your life than where you are right now, then you have to do more than you've done up to this point. And a big part of that for me is surrounding myself with the right people and getting the right coach that are way more successful than you in the space where you want to be successful, learn from them, copy them, and don't try and reinvent the wheel. And uh, You're in control of your mindset. You, you can control what you do right now and what you, what you think about, where you spend some time uh, improving yourself. And I think it, for me, it comes deep, deep, deep within me uh, because I, I want to keep improving myself every single day. And so it, you've got to generate that appetite. And I didn't go from, or I'm going to have weekends off to now I'm just going to uh, keep on pushing through. It was a gradual process, like any part of success. No one goes from zero to nothing. Like that movie, I quite like it. That movie yesterday, where um, you know it's um, obviously it's a made up movie, but there's a there's a world event, and this guy goes from you know being unknown to over a period of short period of time is like this huge success, and he um, he uses all the Beatles songs to become a uh, kind of this overnight success and discovered by Ed Sheeran and all that kind of stuff. That's fantasy, right? It doesn't happen that way. You've got to build and build and build. And if you can accept that and realize that and know that any stories that perhaps you're seeing on social media and stuff, the chances are uh, it's it's not 100% authentic and if you if you can get the fact that success is going to come from only working really hard consistently over a long period of time, then that's when it starts to show up. Don't expect to do something a few times and you don't get success. Oh, well, I'll try something else. Uh, it doesn't work that way. And I think with your growth mindset, it's it's a habit that you need to to get into. And I would encourage you to do it every day. And then just like me, you, because I didn't always record podcasts, I just dis determined the things that would work for me to help me grow. And I went from doing them a couple of times a week to then three days a week to four days a week to five days a week. Uh, and then eventually got to doing these things seven days a week. And uh, now it kind of makes you unstoppable. Uh, but good question. How do you define success for yourself and how has that definition evolved over time? Well, I think success for me comes down to, it's sort of related to the previous question, about growing uh, and seeing myself as growing every single day. Somebody else might look and say, well, there's no growth there. But if you see that you're making growth, that's really important because let's just say, I think I spoke about this a few weeks ago or maybe on a podcast. If you are actually growing, but you don't see yourself as growing, then that's a problem because you'll either stay where you are or you'll go backwards in your mindset in what it is that you're doing. If you if you are, are not seeing yourself as progressing with the things that you're doing, you'll at some point stop doing those things and then you'll you'll just uh, you'll start to slide backwards. So 
Um, for me, it's about progress. Can I progress every single day? And I make sure that I am, even if it's just a smidge of some area of my life. It's, look, some days you might f- like feel that you're progressing every area of the life where, where you want to grow forward. So if you think about it, you really, I, I think as humans, we, we work really well on three. First, second, and three. Sorry, first, second, third. Gold, silver, bronze. We can remember three things. Go to five, and it's like, oh, I forget what that fifth one was. Uh, but three, we work really well. So I think if you can pick three areas of your life to have that focus on, then they might shift over time. But three to focus on consistently. Um, that's where you're going to have some really great growth. So if you have, for me, it, number one is always health, wellness, fitness, mindset. I put that all into into that one. Uh, wealth creation is one of mine, which my business fits into that. My clients fit into that. And the other one is to do with um, uh, relationships, which uh, I put my daughter in that and uh, like business relationships, other friendships and, and that kind of stuff. They're the ones that I I tend to focus on. Now, you might have other ones in there. Maybe there's a spiritual one there for you. Maybe you, you split out relationships differently. Um, like I'm single, happily single, um, and because people say, oh, you poor thing, you're single. Uh, so you might put your intimate relationships in one. You might put relationships with your kids in another one. You might put, uh, say, broader family, friends, et cetera, in other relationships. You know, whatever it is for for you, define uh, what those things are. And then uh, for me, it's progressing. So is it possible to progress all of those things all the time? Perhaps, sometimes, but most of the time, no. So you put your energy into, okay, I'm going to really progress this one, focus on that. Now I'm moving, I'm focusing on this one, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so for me, it's about progress in uh, in those areas. So if I take my health, for instance, because the other part of the question was how has it evolved over time? Uh, so sometimes I talk about this with uh, 1988 when I first started uh, training, so 36 years ago. My, my main goal for success there was putting on, it was 12 kilos in, well, actually, I, I think to start with, it was 10 kilos in 10 weeks. I just wanted to completely change everything about the physical me. And I wanted to put on 10 kilos. I wanted it to be uh, 10 kilos of muscle. It wasn't going to be 10 kilos of muscle, uh, but it was 10 kilos. Part of that was body fat and a, a big part of it was muscle as well, but I'd never done any strength training before. And uh, that felt really good for me. Uh, is putting on 10 kilos of muscle now success for me? No, I'm I am unlike well, I am not uh going to be able to put on 10 kilos of muscle unless I used uh, artificial stimulants like drugs and that kind of stuff. Now that doesn't fall into a part of my definition of health. Um, so I'm a natural athlete. I'm not going to take uh, drugs. So it's not going to be possible for me to put on 10 kilos of muscle at age 56. It's just not, it's not possible for me. Now, with my genetics and age and everything. Uh, so my my definition of success in, in health, if you like, has changed over 36 years. And so I just determine what, I come up with the definition of what's important for me in terms of my health. I talk about this uh, often on my podcast. For me, it's about uh, being pain-free is really important, as in like joint joint free, um, sorry, pain free in my joints. It's about having lots of energy. It's about being focused. So now we're talking about my mindset. I brought that in to my training now, which I wouldn't have had 36 years ago. Um, I, I doubled down on my health. So just that process of focusing on my health is really important because as we get to my age and beyond, that's where, say, the abuse of your your body and your lack of focus from decades gone by starts to show up as I see it in my clients. Um, I, I want to be strong. I don't want my body to dictate what I can't do. Um, so that's really important. Um, I want to also look good. And for me, one of the things that's important for me, looking good naked, even though I'm single, it's got nothing to do with anyone else. This is purely for me. Like, what do I want to see? And I say look good naked because uh, for me, if I know that that ticks that box for me, I know that it, and it might imply that it's about what you see and it's only skin deep. But for me, I know that that's how I keep score, if you like. I know that I'm eating 
the, the right way. I know I'm getting my strength training in. I know I'm doing the right balance of cardio and I'm sleeping well. I know I feel good. Uh, I'm taking my supplements. I'm drinking the amount of water, my three liters. All of those things I know that I'm doing because it shows up in what I'm seeing uh, in the mirror. Uh, so uh, that that has changed. I've now put in a bigger, a broader definition of what health means to me to include focus, energy, et cetera, which I wouldn't have had uh, earlier. So I, I think it just changes for for you, where you are in your life, what's important for you, you know, at a, at that point in life. To be pain-free, to love my training, uh, to keep evolving my training, to track what it is that I'm doing, keeping myself on track and accountable is important for me. And um, so all of those things may not be important to anyone else, maybe components are, but for me, it's about continually uh, putting it as my number one focus and what what are the elements within that that I need to change and learn? I use ChatGPT, for instance, AI, which didn't exist when I first started training to uh, to learn now, to ask questions about my body, what I'm feeling, how can I keep evolving my mindset and, and things like that, just to keep it interesting. Always reading, always learning in the space of how do I keep things fresh for me and and that with my, my, my whole approach to life. So, yeah. I'm taking a, a long time to answer some of these questions. Uh, next one, uh, maybe I'll only go through four. I'll do two more questions. What are some creative ways to incorporate physical activity into a busy schedule? And how do you stay motivated to move? Well, let me just have a drink of water. It's actually got a bit of pre-workout in there. Uh, for me, my thinking here, so creative ways to incorporate physical activity. So when you're busy... I work with a lot of highly successful entrepreneurs. I work with um, many left brain people. So I'm very left brain, which means if you can see my desk right now, everything has a place. You can see my bookshelf over there. Everything's in, uh, uh, you know, in order in my studio, in my kitchen, in my house. Everything has an order for me. Left brain is it's, it's a little bit like robot. I must do this before I can do this and this and this and this, and I cannot do. Um, this one before I do this one. Uh, but the right brain is, oh, I've got a whole lot of things to do. Oh, let me just try this one now. Oh, no, I've had enough of that. Let me try this one. And it's not a right or wrong. It's just the way that we process things and process success and, and the order of things. So I think when we're busy, the left brain person can be sitting at their desk for long, long periods of time, getting things done and not moving. So what I encourage my uh, my left brain clients to do is to, and but the, the principles apply for anyone, think about where you have to take scheduled breaks. So maybe sit down for an hour and then, all right, so get up, move around, walk around, go and do, um, you know, just incidental walking. If you're in an office, say, I've got to go fill up my drink bottle, Go take a two-minute break. Go to the loo. Go have some water. To walk up and down the hallway, something like that, a couple of times to just freshen up your brain because you can think, I'm going to be super productive. I'm so busy. I just go hour after hour after hour. The reality is if you took a short break, maybe stepped outside, you can see it's sunny out, outside here, you got some natural light into your eyes as well. Uh, then that will make you feel better and you'll be more productive. So one of the things that I do is, uh, so I use the weekends to do meal prep and that sort of stuff. I put it in the freezer. So while my meal is, depending on which one I'm having, it takes anywhere between, I'll say, seven to 10 minutes from me sitting here to then having the meal ready to eat as I'm cooking it in the microwave and stuff. I'll use that seven to 10 minutes to do a few things around around the office or around the home and I, I might just walk up and down I might step outside I might take the pets outside I might water some plants I might do some of those domestic chores in that time where I'm consciously moving uh, when I'm, in, I'm coaching with my clients in my studio and not doing say zoom coaching I'm walking around a bit so my goal is to make sure that I do 10,000 steps of maybe it's a, a structured walk or maybe it is just incidental walking by the time I go to sleep at night. Sometimes that's all right. I'm going to do laps around uh, my bed. So I've got a walk-in robe that goes all the way around. I might do uh, uh, and some more steps there. I might walk up and down the hall. I've got a long, a long house. So I might walk up and down there and just do some incidental steps as well. So I think it's 
the key is to have a goal on your steps. And so I, I wear, um, you know, like the, the watch, which keeps track of my, my steps. So if I tell you right now, for instance, up to this point, I've done 6,762 steps for the day. I will probably go out for maybe a lap of my block, which is about a kilometer. And that will give me maybe 8,000 steps, maybe a little bit more. And I will just incidentally doing some work around home, watering the plants and stuff a little bit later, uh, I will get in my 10,000 steps today. Um, so if you've got to focus on a goal, if you're not moving much at all. So I have, did a coaching session with a client this week. Uh, my goal for them is to be consistent with 5,000 steps every day for this next seven days, okay? So have, be focused on a number of steps, a goal for you to just move more, right? And just whatever does it for you, incidental walking, getting outside, maybe it's getting on a, a, a like a cross train, getting on a treadmill, whatever it is, you've got to enjoy the process. Pick something that's going to be fun for you. All right, last question. How do you handle feedback or criticism and what steps do you uh, take to turn it into a positive learning experience? Yeah, so this is a really good question. And the first part, feedback or criticism, when somebody says something to you, our initial reaction is to take it personally. Why are we taking it personally? Because you're taking it as criticism. You're taking it as someone criticizing you as a person. Now, depending on what it is, it may not be meant that way. I find most humans don't communicate very effectively. So somebody may not have meant it that way. And it may be in the workplace setting where it's around the way that you're doing something. Now, I think as a human trait, we think we are always right, particularly men. We always think we're right. And depending on how coachable you are, you will take it personally and say, well, in your own mind or even out loud, that the other person is just wrong because I am always right. Now, just think about this for a moment. Have you been 100% right with every single thing you've done for your entire life up to this point? And if you say yes, you're lying to yourself because you will not have got 100% for every single test that you've done through school, right? And that's a perfect example of you are not always right. Now, when it then comes to your personal life, are you always right? No. Have you ever said the wrong thing? Yes. No one's been completely perfect and not upset people for your entire life. And so I think if you're open to the fact that sometimes you are wrong, then for me, it's, I think I mentioned this last week, it's about asking these three questions. One, how can I grow from what feedback you've just received? So remove the word criticism, just say it's feedback. Um, how can I learn from what I've just been told, they are different. And what are the opportunities from what feedback I've just been given? And if you refuse to answer them negatively, then you will find that you will grow. Now, do people say things just to upset you? Yes, they do. Particularly when you're younger in the schoolyard and that kind of stuff. And so let's just say, that somebody has said something to you that's completely untrue. It's happened to me. You have people that you think are in your inner circle and have been uh, disloyal uh, for whatever reason, right? And so you can say, well, what can I learn from that? And say, well, you can learn perhaps that people are going to let you down, that people that you think, and this goes with family as well, People that you think were in your inner circle perhaps are now not going to be. Uh, so you can learn that, well, maybe what I learned from this is that people will not always have your back. Uh, people will be loyal to an opportunity rather than the person. Um, those characteristics or traits, you, you can realize that, 
well, they don't align with my values and, and beliefs and not everybody is going to align with that. So this is somebody that I need to remove outside that circle. You can learn from that. How do you grow from it? Well, you can say, well, maybe I'm going to be slower to trust now. The more and more people that let you down, you'll find that you're going to be slower to trust. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, I think it's a good thing because it's not until people let you down that you realize that you can't trust everybody, right? Would you trust trust a complete stranger on the street to say, here, can you just look after my car? And you'll say, no, if, if somebody did that to me, they didn't know me, then I'm going to look after that car probably better than they did because somebody is trusting me with it. And that's just the values and beliefs that I have. If it's say a gang member that is consistently stealing cars and using them for ram raids and then burning them out, are you going to have that same level of trust there? No. And so you, because of that, you're not just going to give your car keys to a stranger because you don't know them well enough to know, do I really trust this person? Uh, so that's something there. What are the opportunities uh, from that situation? You say, well, there's an opportunity now for me to perhaps allow someone new into my inner circle or uh, I, I need to be aware that uh, I need to mix with a different group of people. I need to find ways to connect with more successful people, uh, people that you aspire to be in their, their inner circle. And so if you refuse to answer those questions negatively, there is only growth that comes from any feedback that you get. And the way that I handle it is also to say, hmm, did I do something wrong here? Like, did I say something? Did I do something that was outside my normal character? Um, is Because all feedback is real and it's based on other people's perception and people's perception is their reality. I think that's the thing to realize. And we, we don't all have the same religion. We don't all follow the same people in politics. We don't all live in the same looking households, wear the same clothes, do the same things, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, we're all different. And at some point, there's going to be challenge and that's okay. That's what makes life interesting. It means that you're not always going to hang out with the same people and just in life and just in general, you're just not going to enjoy the same things that other people do. Some people like the, the nightclub scene and all that kind of stuff. That would be my worst nightmare. Some people love going on cruises and doing and that. That would be my worst nightmare as well. I hate that sort of thing. So, uh, but other people love it and that's fine. It doesn't make me right them wrong. It's just different. Uh, but I always see, all right, there's some feedback here. Hmm, did I do something that's outside my values and beliefs? Have I said the wrong thing to some people. We all make mistakes. And I'd be the first person to put up my hand and say, do you know what? I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that, um, you know, uh, that would upset you or that I I was just angry or I, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Just to, and, and I suppose with that, the the first thing that most people want to do is say, make up an excuse. And sometimes you just need to say, do you know what? I'm sorry. I was wrong. Heaven forbid a man say that they were wrong and just leave it at that and apologize and say, do you know what? I was wrong. And just do not make up excuses for it. It's just, I was just wrong. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. And there's a learning in that for you to say, do you know what? You've just upset somebody that's perhaps really meaningful in your life and you just have to accept it. Don't try and make excuses for it and just accept it. Um, and yeah, I think that you can always learn, grow and find opportunities from any feedback that you've, you've been given and look, to be honest, sometimes that means, uh, leaving toxic relationships. It means leaving, uh, workplaces and that kind of stuff because they're just not right for you. And that is okay as well. So they're my questions for this week. Sorry if that took a little bit longer than normal. I really like to talk, so uh, which is funny because there was a time in my life where I would hate doing something like this. But yeah, hopefully this time next week, the eye is not 
as bad as it is. I've got three weeks to go before I head on my my trip to LA to meet a bunch of celebrities and network with people from 78 countries around the world. So I'm looking forward to that. Have a great week, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.